Business leaders from London is visiting South Africa next week as part of a tour that will also include stops in Ghana, Nigeria and Mozambique. The group is being led by the Lord Mayor of the City of London, Alan Yarrow, who hopes not only to promote the city's financial services but also drive through deals, which he says could be beneficial to both countries. And he had positive words about prospects for South Africa's economy despite recent global turmoil. Our correspondent, Catherine Drew, sat down with him shortly before his departure. Alan Yarrow, Lord Mayor of the City of London, thanks for joining us. Firstly, tell us more about your trip. We're well, taking a huge group of people, a very broad spectrum of people, insurance, legal, uh, financial services, education, basically to try, try and drive forward the global standards of the various countries we're going to go and see. After all, these countries, which are some are emerging, some are actually quite mature. I mean, South Africa in particular is actually quite a mature economy compared to the rest of the parts of Africa. But other parts of Africa have got more things to go for. And so the rule of law is critically important, for example. Now, you have a good judicial system, actually, in South Africa. It's independent and it's very highly respected. But that's one of the issues which actually makes a financial centre work, is the law of contract, rule of, rule of, rule of uh, trade dispute, resolution, etc. So is that your key message here? Without doubt. I've been to 24 countries already this year, and there's no doubt. Also, ironically, being the uh, 800th anniversary of Magna Carta, even those countries which don't have Magna Carta in their constitution actually believe that the rule of law is critical to the success of their country. Well, Johannesburg and Pretoria and other African political and financial centres have plenty of choice when it comes to financial services. Why should they look to London? You know, we do 44% of the world foreign exchange markets. That's twice as much as anybody else in the world. You can't ignore it. You know, this is a very important centre. So if you want to get access to global invested money, you've got to understand what the standards those investors are expecting to see. And that is why you need to speak to the marketplace. If I can also go on to one other thing, which I think is important, and that is that capital markets are critical to the investment of infrastructure for these countries. And you need to have the institutions in place. And those institutions are the life assurance companies, the pension funds, because they have a 30-year view, and they are value buyers. You only have to look at China recently, what the upheaval they had in their stock exchange. The reason for that is 85 to 90% of their investors are retail. They don't have those shock absorbers of long-term institutions. South Africa has got the infrastructure of those institutions, but the reality is that they still need to have comfort that the quality of the investments coming forward actually the ones that are going to deliver real value for the long term. You mentioned the recent turmoil in China. How do you think trade missions like yours can help? Well, I've been around for eight bad markets, three bad ones. You know, five weren't so bad. But the reality is we're in a commodity cycle. This happens frequently. There are ups and downs that go on. There'll be good times again quite soon, and that'll be good for the emerging economies. But we have got a change in gear taking place at the moment. You know, China's on a long journey. Actually, it's hit a bump in the road, and the car's slowed down a bit. And that has an impact, particularly on African economies, because they are very largely resource-based. But, you know, we can see through these things. And therefore, it's, I've always been told, as a sort of, you don't buy something until you're really quite worried. Because the point being, actually, that mean, means the story's been discounted. And it's so often the case that people buy things when they think the news is so good. But actually, that means it's probably coming to an end. So the time to be buying the emerging markets is coming up quite soon, I think. And that's why I think it's an exciting time to go and visit South Africa and the other African countries. Given the weakness of South Africa's RAND, how does the City of London view doing business with South Africa? It is the part of Africa that works. You know, it's got the infrastructure there, it's got the institutions, it's got the rule of law. So it's got the building blocks. So that's the excitement about South Africa. Uh, and so I think South Africa is actually getting into a very interesting place now. That's a rather rosy view of South Africa's economy. I'm not sure people there would necessarily share that with you. Very few people do in their own country they live in, when they live in it, actually, ironically. Uh, it's the people who are looking from outside in actually have sometimes a better perspective of what's happening. And I think, as I said before, you've got those very difficult things already established. Do not underestimate the importance of the rule of law. And do not underestimate the importance of an independent judiciary. And those are the criteria which, which the international fund managers want to have a surety of contract and ownership. And those are already there. There are other countries in Africa where they're way, way, way behind. So people who want to get involved in Africa, actually, South Africa's got to be the right place to start. Well, trade ministers from...